go. This is Flash Somebody at In a Perfect World flying without my partner Vincenzo tonight. Vinny's on a <laughs> he's on a snipe hunt. <laughs> he's gonna go find him a snipe. And then he's gonna kill it, and then he's gonna skin it, and then he's gonna cook it, and then he's gonna have dinner. Anyway, that was a lot of fun for no particular reason. Just uh, making light of my lack of hostage here on In a Perfect World on this 12th of March, 2019. And, and we're going to say hey to Grim, does all the dirty work for all us lazy radio people. And some of us even try to, to learn how to do the, the techie things, but... Oh, man. Anyway, thanks a lot, Grim, for always having my ass when I can't figure out what I'm doing. And we're going to say hi to the bots and the bodies out there in reallibertymedia.com where all this originates. That's right. Right here in the 21st century, the greatest thinking minds of the 19th gather. Smoke a bunch of pot, drink coffee bitch about politicians and go to bed <laughs> it's called the internet people have a giggle anyway we have barman grimner moose girl she's at work she can't be on here miss kate anti asmo beth z chess Doni i be done cj dread meister brow rain rob works roms fan of white weather dork phantom and well then, Beetle, Circle, Colfax, 101, Cyborg, Noodle, Dakota, Me, Frumped, Gromit, Java Doctor, 2, J's, 9's, J's, Kozu, Kiss, Pwn Sauce, Sock Puppet, Tech Man, and the new game bot, I think. Ooh, no. Because if you called it anything else, well, it wouldn't be Uno, would it? All right, enough stalling around here, I suppose. I don't have a um, a lot of fill for the sh topic or the title I came up with tonight, but I was either watching a movie or reading chat or something, and I come up with this one. Do you have a date with ignorance? Question mark. And I thought, wow, that. Uh, if somebody ever said that to you in person, what would you think? I don't think I get as far as thinking. I think I'd be pretty insulted already and on the way to either leaving or, hmm, well, there's not much other choice. We don't go around punching people when we're grown-ups, but we're still capable of getting pissed off, I suppose. Hmm. Now, let's see if I'm being audible tonight. Can you hear me out there in the reallibertymedia.com chat where all these ideas start out at. Yeah, the very beginning of life as we know it. Anyway, I got a couple questions to uh, guess jibber-jabber about on In a Perfect World. And the first one was, do you have a date with ignorance? And the second one was, <laughs> what is a license? And hold on one second. Not to be redundant, but I really got a giggle out of Grimm's topic. The first thing he did last night was about cannabis legalization. Hold on one second. A little congestion problem here, and I didn't want to be making you guys all join me in it. It's kind of private, if you know what I mean. Anyway, so Grimm, he read this new... Uh, bill they're putting forward and it, it just looks like more uh, more trap being laid out you know so that the states that didn't figure this out the first time around when they passed legalization well they can always amend it and pick up a few extra dollars here and there but yeah the ridiculousness of needing to prove you bought your weed from a licensed dispensary. Hmm. Now, was 
just a few years ago this shit took you to hell and made you bowl cats on street corners for twenty dollars now they want you to have a license to show them that you bought it from a reputable source so you're you're not out there taking your chances getting poisoned by some black marketeer selling cannabis well i don't know this game is it's never going to end they're just too many people have too many different uh, ideas about how this whole thing is and how it works and what it does and who it affects and on and on and on and then there's people like me that think you know you guys are making a big damn deal over a fucking plant that people use it and exaggerate what happens when they use it I can still for out how many years I've been using stuff None of that Willie Nelson and all these other celebrity fucking people, none of that shit ever happens to me. I just get the munchies, laugh at cartoons, tell my wife bad jokes. <laughs> but, you know, no swinging off the chandelier and naked. That's that's whiskey, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe mushrooms. Oh, I don't know. You'd have to be... It would have to be something a lot more interesting than cannabis and I know they've got strains of cannabis that'll knock you off your butt blah blah blah, blah. but my experience with cannabis is it's pretty much harmless alone cannabis is like the married guy you know if his wife ain't around don't don't go messing things up dragging a half naked blonde over there and getting him drunk Give him a joint and he'll just wait for her to show up. But <laughs> add alcohol to a situation and you have all the problems that they claim come from pot. But see, alcohol's legal and they regulate and tax it for your, I don't know, for what for? <laughs> so the, somebody's making an, something off of something. But I, I look at it like we're passing around IOUs for, you know, currency and using these cards and all this crap. They got money in the bank and all this. So there's some form of reality to it. But when you think about how quickly it can be taken away from you with no no warning, no notice, and we're pretty weak right now. A, a good electrical storm or maybe some nasty kids that want to go chop down some what do you call them cell towers or do some kind of vagrant when they don't call it vagrancy anymore what do they call it? uh not vandalism they call it terrorism you know some kids might get stupid and go out there and do something insane but you know what we're not prepared for that <laughs> it's the, the farthest thing from what we're ready for right now is the system to fail. And I've noticed an, an air of uh, disappointment amongst my peers in the reallibertymedia.com chat over the years. And some of you out there in Radio Land don't seem too goddamn happy with the way things are being run. <laughs> And, and the bad news to the whole thing is, for my entire life, the whole 59 I've been hanging around, it's always the same crap. The guy in the suit promises he's going to do this and do that, and he's going to beat this thing and smash that thing, and then he gets the job, and he says, uh, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go talk to my go talk to my assistant over there. She'll She'll take a number, and we'll get to you. And that's success, people. That's what we're all standing around waiting for. We want that. Well, not standing around waiting for it. you got to be in there like a, I don't know what, like a piranha at a, at a meal. You know, or maybe an ant doing its little ant thing in its ant life. And we ain't no different. I don't think so. And it was this earlier today. I was thinking about that, how fortunate it is to not have to live in a big city. And I loved me, my big cities when I was living in them. But it's not the 
world that changed. It's the same freaking world now that was there when I first showed up. But I think I'm the one that changes. And the world, see, that's, it keeps spinning around in a circle at, like, what, what's that, a thousand miles an hour or something, Cirk? Yes. Through space, uh, just going round and round. And all this shit's happening on it. And we're not even sitting here either. We're, we're doing the same thing that they tell us that's doing. Well, I don't know. It's a good story, and it's a lot of fun, but I can't figure any of it out. Just good enough to be happy with the story. I gotta know more. <laughs> Actually, it's not even more. It's more like the things that interest me are not the things that interest almost everybody else. Most of them. And I'm not talking about things like the uh, the link on... on um, Grimner's uh, leftover program, I'm talking about the things that I think cannot possibly be the things that my wife thinks, for, for example, or anybody that's uh, on the chat room right now. This is, amazes me how completely individual we really are, and then you look at it, you move over four feet to the right, and you look at this mess, and then it it doesn't look like a bunch of individuals anymore. Then it just looks like a big mess, a big pile of something. So, depending on my mood, depending on if I had enough sleep, what I ate, it blah, 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 blah. All these things go into making a decision. And the brain, boom, it does it. It does things for me I don't even ask it to do all the time. And I bring that up because Grim was doing a thing about the robots. Because the robots go to put us all out of work. They go to take our jobs. And we're going to be yelling, hey, you goo back, give me back my job. Hmm. But I like the way you got to the point at the end and just said, well, wait, wait a minute. They're making it in the female instead of the male. Hmm. So when are you going to get to the part where it's a sex bot? And wow, when you when you see what the double standard bullshit talk we get through the press and movies, and then the reality is just whatever it's always been. Boobs run the world in two ways. Some have a bra and some don't need one because the boobs they have are in their head. <laughs> But they wear a suit well, and maybe they can read. That's always been a good one. They get some dummy up there that can read. Read them this script right here, and they'll believe everything you say. You're the president, for fuck's sake. Go do your job, son. And then they go out there, and they say the damnedest, most unbelievable, illogical, ignorant, stupid shit that anybody could ever imagine saying out loud. And for 200 plus years, that's the most important guy in this whole fucking country. By God. Better bow and do the, what do you do, the POTUS dance and throw money at him when he passes by now? This new, though, the, the last one, the Trump guy. Whoa. I think that Trump went to the Snootiversity of New York. I don't think he's got an education. And then there's a few people that really hmm, really value that word. Ooh, you have an education. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll bet you that the guy that has the education that doesn't know how to change a flat tire on a car 4 o'clock in the morning driving home from his fancy night out <laughs> probably doesn't feel so damn smart. Should that happen to him? And I'm saying this stuff lately because the system seems to be working Venezuela over. They're giving them the same old routines from, uh, what was it, Iran? No, not Iran. Iraq. Get those two confused because one has a fast, fancy cue at the end of it. And the other one don't. Anyway. So they're doing this Venezuela dance down in the south to go get some more oil. Where are all the people that don't want oil at? I mean, I hear plenty of stuff about, 
well, the Americans are behind the coup d'etat and it's exposed and everybody knows everybody's fucking business because we have the internet. You can't lie like you could once upon a time. Now you have to tell a little bit of the truth. Not all of it, just just a little bit. And people will, they'll still follow you and wow. I like Rob works. I don't get it, Rob. I know you don't get it. Grimner don't get it. I don't get it. Cirque don't get it. There's a few folks I could waste a whole bunch of time thinking of something else to talk about. Just naming off all you brainiacs out there in Real Liberty Media. Mm. Just saw the Cowboy Tech pop in and pop out and then pop in again. Well, that was like electronic something, wasn't it? Ha 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 thought I was going to say the S word, didn't you? Anyway, so I'm dreaming small in 2019 instead of dreaming big. And I've got a big project in the works in my head, but it's a small thing. It's just the backyard, but physically doing it and thinking about doing it, that's like two different places. Well, you know, you go, hey, I could do that with one arm no i can't do that with one arm tied behind my back wait a minute (laughs) but we got spring coming up over here pretty soon we got all the signs of it sun came out there's uh eh, relatively coolish weather it doesn't really get warm until about may and then it's a tease i think i got one day it made it to 80 since I've been uh, away from the Americas and been up this way in the Northland. But usually, the high 70s, eh, mid-70s, 72, 74, that's a usual summer day I'll be looking forward to. But between now and then, I told the wife I'd help her do some more gardening and um uh, committed myself to a little bit more work than I put out last time. So, hmm, let's see, but it's not a great big piece of land, but when, you know, when you're a a couch potato like me and you, you know, sit around on your dead ass and you don't ever do anything, oh by God, country, that's going to be like a lot of work. But hey, we got a lot of farmer browns since Mary dumped the uh, um, dork table to become a farmer lots of other people been talking hey i think i'm gonna grow me some veggies this uh this time around when spring comes so uh, i think the monsanto got wind of that story and they went hey we ain't gonna let you have any spring fuckers (laughs) instant winter forever And now here we are. We're all freezing. We're all cold. All waiting for that spring to pop around. And some people got a little worse than others. I know. I've heard. And uh, I'll... Anyway. Some people got a little better. They call you the braggers, Miss Kate. Rob works that live down there. Well, Gremner not so much because he's got that new mexico stuff so he's not really south where the other ones are well in that kind of temp temperature where they're at they got a sweeter deal on the sunshine than the uh rest of us do and I, i've just grown to uh not really like well i don't dislike it i think i just deal with it you know it's there it's going to end and change so eh. and here it's uh, every couple of months the weather and the cycle moves to another one, so it's it's fairly predictable. No extremes. I'm very lucky. Blah blah blah. Woo woo woo. Now let's go on to what the fuck is a license? And you know, I've avoided these things except for getting married for the last wow since the '80s, and uh, twice I've been married, but my you know, present situation's a little different than anything I'd ever thought of trying before. Hmm. But as I recall, the government wanted 
all my important documentation so they could ascertain if I was, you know, like the Incredible Hulk or a terrorist or whatnot before they let me marry their Danish girl. And, uh, man, I did all that and blah, blah, blah. But it really burns my ass to sign my name. Boy, Sirk probably still remember me fidgeting around and very uncomfortable. It was obvious. Everybody was kind of, wow, what? fuck's your problem charlie you're just writing your name on something but i i believe that there's a certain amount of uncomfortability that some of us share you know in that paper world i call it the paper world and if you can avoid the paper world then avoid it and if you can't avoid the paper world then at least understand what you're doing you know, because, for example, so many people think, hey, I've got this mortgage, I have this job, and all this responsibility, and I own this house, and they're the people that are the hardest to explain to that uh, the money wasn't real, uh, the bank owns the house, and after the bank, then you got the state, and they'll own it, and you get argued, and fought with, and blah, 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 people just don't want to know. So here we are, and I was thinking about this. Here we are in this like real liberty media, and there's lots of other chat rooms all over the world. People don't only speak English, trust me. And there's little pockets like us everywhere, scattered all over the fucking place. But we don't know each other. We, what we need, I think, would be some kind of a way. To network, maybe we could do competitions like egghead competitions on the internet from one group to another group. You know, not to make a bigger group, just to know there's more groups out there. Uh, it's a funny little way to explain it, but I think it makes a lot of sense. And then there's still people that are traveling around. Don C was uh, he was in California. I think today he stu said he was stuck there till the end of the week doing some kind of stuff but he's not uh he's not always stuck in one spot some people like to be mobile some people don't i never in a i never thought i'd ever be satisfied stand put that was part of the license thing you know because when you promise people stuff whatever you promise is you should keep your word right well I've never found the license and a contract and all that necessary because if you don't do what you say, well, I'm not going to do what I say either. So the design of the compromise is the more important part of it than uh, what the deal is, how the deal is agreed upon. And people, I think people are just very easily uh, manipulated with trust me i know what i'm doing i'm an expert i have a phd in this and that and the other follow me i know where i'm going well, all that's well and good but it's just kind of like fluffery you know i don't see why you should need a license to sell um fruit you grew in your backyard or trade them or whatever you do with what you got so I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to get a license. I don't give a shit if there's supposed to be a fucking license. I'm one of those people. But I live in a place where these kind of things are, they're not frowned upon yet by the society. <laughs> he ain't the Hulk. He's the Flash. No, I s actually, let me change the subject here. Talk about that for a second. I got the nickname from being quick at putting up music links. And one of the people I used to talk to back in the World Truth days. Hold on. She uh, she said, well, we, we call you Flash. You're fast with the um, music links. <laughs> and I And I liked it. So I took it and went, Flash somebody. There's a disgusting name. People probably won't be able to forget too easy. I'm enjoying a nice sip of my elixir. Yeah, I had one before the show, so 
I didn't get it delivered to me like I often do. But anyway. Oh, I don't know. I've got a lot of little detail things going on, but no specific topic tonight. You know, um, do you have a date with ignorance? Do you ever meet anybody that behaved in a fashion that brought that to your mind <laughs> where you just... You look upon somebody and you just wonder how they made it so far. <laughs> they, they seem to do, they put so little into survival that it's like a miracle they, they know how to do it. <laughs> now, that, hold that thought for another because people go, well, blind, dumb, do, da, luck. And I say unto you, maybe, maybe not, you know. Maybe there's more to this existence shit that we do than we're taught to explore for a reason. You know? If you're distracted by this, then you can't find that. It's kind of obvious. Now, defining those things, wow, that would go probably change from person to person. You know, what would what would interest you would probably bore the hell out of me and vice versa. <laughs> hey, Cowboy Tech's putting up clever posts. And so is Grim. I'll try this again. I pulled this off the other day when I was doing the, I think, the dork table. And Vinny, Vinny's, Vinny's dumped me like a ugly date and he left. He went, I'm not going to do this. You're on your own radio <laughs> let's call it climate disruption why white house science advisors suggests again <laughs> oh i'm gonna read a little bit of this this is kind of cool first there was global warming then many researchers suggested climate change was a better term now White House Science Advisor John Haldren is renewing his call for a new no men clatcher <laughs> to describe the end result of dumping vast quantities of carbon dioxide and other heat trapping gases into Earth's atmosphere. Global climate disruption. Well, that was fun. And the, oh, wow. This is what I mean. Well, the people that do the things that they're talking about are the ones not being pointed at for doing anything. They've completely turned this on the consumer. <laughs> and with their clever studies and their fancy ink and their, you know, links. <laughs> They're going to prove, without, within a shadow of a doubt, that it's all our fault. That go that government and industry did this shit, and we paid for it, so it must be all our fault. Punish them some more. How? How many more trillions of dollars of pretend money is there to pretend we have before... Somebody wants to get paid. <laughs> I am so confused with all this. I see the Bitcoin stuff on the internet. And in my mind, they're they're valuing it according to the U.S. dollar. <laughs> so, uh, well, what is the U.S. dollar worth right now? Well, and there, there you go. Number games. I mean, we're we're playing these really brilliant, thought out games, but at some point, the weight of the deception that they're built on just it collapses into itself, and shit goes horribly wrong. <laughs> now, the last time this happened back what two thousand and eight. The greatest thinking minds of the 21st century decided to print more money. That'll fix everything. <laughs> and of course, whatever came after that, printing, 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 digit, 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 computer, computer, computer. But nothing 
changes hands except labor, you know. No physical financial transactions take place, but yet people go to work and do their job and all this constantly goes on around us because of a shared illusion about a bit of paper. Okay. Now, what would happen if the illusion came to a screeching halt and it all collapsed? Then what? What would people do? Who would tell them, hey, you don't have a job to go to, Johnny, because there's no electricity to operate with? Because, see, maybe you have a storm or a hurricane or a tornado or an earthquake or one of those things. But, you know, when it comes down to, hmm, what are we going to do? And people have made this thing so big on purpose that you can't even depend on your neighbor to help you get through whatever comes up. They got us all fighting. We're all going to kill each other in our sleep and poison the water and all that kind of crap. That's what I've been reading for years and years. Everybody's on fire. If they're not rioting or shooting people, cops are shooting people. People are shooting people. Hell, I read something about a, a what was it, a cop that he's being investigated on a criminal charge, and while that's going on, he kills a hooker. <laughs> wow, some of these people have uh, nut. I nothing. Okay, Flash. Somebody says. Nothing changes hands. <laughs> That's true. Well, it doesn't. And it's all in a, a big loop. All that big money crap. This is why I refuse to take this beyond, okay, they're fucking us. But to take it seriously and be dependent on it for my next breath, nah, nah. These people are, they're trying to do is screw us all equally. Under the guise of helping the few, <laughs> it's it's looking pretty bad. I mean, in an overall, because here we are, all these, not 2019, and you still have countries arguing about the same crap that they've always argued about as a reason to go in and save people. But when you look at the country this is being originated from, America... When I saw tent cities in America at that moment, I went, oh, no, 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 something is seriously fucking wrong here. Now, they're going to claim to help everybody else, and they do all these things to raise money, and they raise millions of dollars, and they're going to go help these people, and then in the end, it's always the same shit. The people didn't get help. The money never made it. Somebody stole it. Blah, blah, blah. What are we going to do? Let's investigate it. <laughs> so, see? All the crooks work hand in hand and just keep this illusion continuously going so that we will not ever tell them to leave us alone so we can grow our own fucking food and hemp. But <laughs> it's, it's what we we kind of resign to with modern uh, the modern technology. And I don't know how this is all going to work out and where I'm from, but the nephew is, what, 14? I think he's 14 now. Uh, 14 or 15. Might have be 15 by now. I, 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 I'm bad with the numbers. But here's a kid that knows how to use a computer and an axe. So, equally. Um, hand tools, power tools. His father taught him, okay, here, this is how you do this and this is how you do that. And the same with the computer, he's good on all of it. So when I read things about, you know, kids from where I'm from, not allowed to use a knife, not allowed to do this, can't that, oh, it's too crowded, wah, 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 wah. But they know how to use a cell phone. <laughs> or is that just the girls that know how to do that? Is that a sex thing? The girls all do the texting and... The guys do all the picturing of their dick or what? How does that work? I'm not real up on the modern day mind. 
because, well, <laughs> I'm old for fuck's sake, I suppose. But uh, anyway, and I said, be careful, but did anybody listen? No, because they were in search of parallel lands to prove their theory. And they seemed to have missed the turn because <laughs> they were just looking for that parallel line, walking straight right in front of them. You know, and I don't know, maybe life isn't really supposed to be uh, chock full of surprises. You're supposed to know what's coming. And my day is planned. I don't have any room for any excitement. Give me a heart attack and I can croak. Oh, yeah, and we got uh, old Java. This is uh, coming up tomorrow. Should be three weeks uh, coming up on recovery time. Let me get my last sip. I'll be right back. Because he's been recovering from his knee problem. And uh, I've seen him pop in and out of the room. So, you know, he's doing okay. But they say, hey, these things are, you know, painful and it's a tough recovery. So it's kind of nice to see him pop up in the room and let us know he ain't, you know, gave up and decided to become a heroin addict and live in the alley with his friends. Because that's what people do in America, right? There's lots of them, too. Anyway, yeah, I was harping about that. How can you have a country so wealthy and so willing to help every fucking body in the world except for the people that were born on the dirt that they came from? Wow. I, I've still yet to figure out who benefits the most off the immigration, though. But it's either the politicians or the lawyers. Could be both. Maybe, maybe the doctors, too, because these are the people writing the laws to make all these things that happen, happen. And it's sweet. You know, you guys all got a nice, oh, but the immigration people are doing this, and then, and they take our jobs. And, you know, the same old crap over and over. But 30 million people. Wow. Now, I don't think that this can be fixed. Whatever that problem is with this illegal immigration I don't think there's anything illegal about it. I think they call it that, but the reason it's existing is because we're living in word games and make-believe and Sandy Hooks, 9-11s, Kennedys, things like that, where you saw what you saw with your own two eyes, but the other people are going to tell you you're wrong. And if you fight them about you being wrong, about being right, they're going to call you names. You know what kind of names they'll call you? Ooh, they might call you an anarchist scum. They might even call you, uh, what do you call that other one? Uh, then I go and lose it. Oh, conspiracy theorist. Yeah, see, it's such a bizarre word in the first conspiracy Oh, I'm waiting for Vinny to break those words down and figure out what they really mean. And that would be a good thing to do. Maybe do that sometime. I brought this one other idea up to Mary, but we never went through with it. Was to take a product, something like a cleaner, and then take a product, something edible, and read the ingredients without telling you which one you, well, you read from, and ask the other person on the radio, well, do you think you'd eat that with your Cheerios? <laughs> and they'd say either yes or no, and then they'd find out which product they'd... Ch wow, that was my dog dropping her bone. Scared me. It's a big bone. <laughs> Animal. <laughs> Shook me because it was so out of pocket. Anyway... Well, I'm uh, just having a terrible night tonight. I can't, can't seem to get my shit together in one bag and do one particular thing at one particular time. Because, you know, the sign should say, beware, advertisers ahead. And that's what politics is, advertising. 
you know, they give you the features and they give you the benefits. And then the next thing they know, you're hooked and you want to bomb the shit out of Venezuela because they're killing their own people. So the best way to help them is to go in there and destroy everything. <laughs> now, this has been working for a while and I'm really kind of sad it continues, but it does. And if it doesn't continue with you, well, who are the butt nuggets that are helping this continue? They need to be informed of the truth. You know, it's like, oh, man, whenever um, I bring up the, I wonder if we're on a globe thing to my wife. Oh, the eyes roll. Oh, the head spins. <laughs> and I love this because, hold on. <coughs> I'm not committing myself to any freaking thing. I'm just asking questions about the existing knowledge. <laughs> and I didn't even say anything to her beside that tonight. I got I got the rolly head and all that shit. But I wrote down a, a question. And it comes to... Here. How to prove the spinning ball theory with stuff around the house. <laughs> See, you can't do it. <laughs> you have to trust other people to feed you knowledge that you don't have access to the source of. Otherwise, what are you going to know? I didn't wake up one day and go, Hey, guess what? We're on a spinning ball flying through space. Thousand miles. Blah, 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 blah. No, other people told me that stuff. And then when I question them about, well, how does that work? <laughs> then came the stories and the excuses and the, well, we don't we, we don't have time time for that right now. Ask ask later. <laughs> oh my! One of my favorite ones when I was a kid was go ask your mom. <laughs> anyway, but. And that was usually about going to the grocery store when I was like nine years old. And, uh, hey, I got a question. Not really a question. This is more of a statement. It was, I wrote it with wrong. But, <clears throat> proving it's fake is easy. Proving it's true is impossible. You cannot prove anything to everybody the same way. Wonder why. Wonder what the hell that's all about. Because I remember being told when I was a kid, individual, and then when I was a teen, individual rights. And then I remember, get your license, go to work, be employed, pay taxes, be a good bee, you know, do your job. Hmm. So something went horribly wrong with me in the educating situation. I can't put my finger on where they failed with me where they didn't fail with other people. But I think it has something to do with that last thing I came up with. That it's uh, Proven it's a fake is easy. Convincing somebody else that your proof is true is not the easiest thing in the world to do. But what the fuck does it have to do with you anyway? when you think about it go hey because if i believe something is true and i think grim was talking something similar to this last i got a real kick out of his show last night unusually so he hit topics that were uh up my my interest train so to speak i think about those things sometimes and uh it all comes back to well Geez, to me, this is so obviously fake, and uh, hmm. it's profitable, and it's uh, it functions, but it functions at the like the weakest possible way it could function. That's what we have, and we call it society. But if you ever go out to nature, and you get like a running stream running by, there's your water. And then you got trees off over in the far distance over there. There's your toilet. And uh, there's a bit of dirt over here. There's your bedroom. 
you know, nature seems to do all the stuff that we've been taught how to handle all by itself. And some of the things that are really important and so, what can I use it as an example that's not going to pick on anyone? I wonder if I can come up with a neutral way to make the point. I don't know. Just if if it's you, say it's me, and uh, you tell me, well, if you uh, use baking soda, we'll go back on the old baking soda because this is a perfect example of how brainwashed people are. If you explain to a cancer patient that alkaline environments do not successfully breed cancer cells, they might not understand what you said. <laughs> they might think that you're high on drugs, too, because, you know, they go to this fancy doctor with his fancy equipment and his remedies, <laughs> radiation, and all that goody, goody, good stuff that they do in the Rockefeller medicine thing. But if you try to explain to somebody how simple that this is, and there's rare cases where you've gone, 50, 50, you go beyond halfway of recovery physically, and there is no turning back, no matter what you use. But I mean, damn! If you're sick, I don't get. I don't know what the symptoms of a cancer would be in the first place. But I've read a lot of things. Oh, so and so died of this cancer and that can't well how did they identify the cancer in the first place you know what was the thing that sent them to the doctor hey doc i mean i know on south park uh kyle's dad wanted to get testicular cancer so he could smoke weed with a card <laughs> but <laughs> that's kind of an extreme way but i mean I've just never met anybody physically in life and had the wherewithal to ask them, what were your symptoms of this internal cancer that you have? And for whatever reason, the uh, the food you eat, well, food I eat, is what creates me. It's what makes me what I am. Now, I don't think not believing baking soda would uh, create an alkaline environment would change that fact. Maybe it would. Say somebody was uh, so mentally in control of their self they could make the chemicals that they put in their body not work. Nope, not going to allow that in here. Oh no, we want radiation and stuff. But none of that fucking baking soda, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, honey. But uh, that's the way it looks. I mean, from a, an uneducated fellow's perspective. But still, I would just assume that if it's so serious, that there must be a book of uh, symptoms to look for in case you have it. And all I've ever heard is, doctor tested me for it. And what prompts the doctor to test you for it? Maybe the information he's using to test you is different than the information you have. Where? Say, hold on. Mmm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> a good word <laughs> anyway sorry about that guys it got away from me it was a <coughs> creeper my uh, my wife <laughs> she loves me to death. <laughs> and uh anyway i've interrupted myself on a really great rant about baking baking soda and, and the reason is, the, the questions that I have in my head are very difficult to verbally ex, you know, come out with. Putting words to some of this stuff is not the easiest. But uh, I was saying that 
there should be like uh, some kind of physical guidelines or something. But all I've ever seen is I went to the doctor and they tested me fur. Well, what made that doctor test for it? And why is it every time they do that, they always get the results they want? Hmm. It, it's, um, hold on. It's too coincidental. You know, once in a blue moon for anything, but when something happens that regularly and people croak at the rate they do, and the system does work so hard to cover and bury and misdirect you away from that and look at, oh, look at all these drug addicts, blah, 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 right? And in the meantime, I don't think, uh, the number of people that die from illegal dr drug addictions is 10% of the number of people that die from legal prescription drug medication things from your doctor. So, then they try to put it on the person. Oh, they overdosed. They took too many pills. Well... There's some little details I've been harping on forever, like the uh, side effects of a drug are not unexpected. <laughs> They're not. See, the way they make... This could happen to you. No, they're they're telling you this is what you can expect. This is the result of taking the pill. But yet they call... <laughs> they misguide. They go, hey... These are side effects, uh, you know, 90, maybe 95%, but you'll, you'll be all right. <laughs> and it sounds like I'm some kind of a lunatic, but 5% of your chemotherapy patients make it to five years, I think. 5% is a really small, I think Mary read it a couple of, I forget, and I write things down, but I got a lot of notes, and I forget where I put stuff, so I'm going to go off memory. Anyway, but I was having a hell of a giggle thinking about how how easy it is, you know, when you don't feel good, and you're feeling so bad that you're willing to go to a doctor to feel better, and then in your weakest, freaking, saddest position you can possibly be in, this guy in a white coat that you've been trained your whole life to believe he's going to help you, no matter how much you don't believe it, you've been told this for 50-odd years, whatever it is, and you're going to go, okay, help me. I'm Because you don't even have the defense left to go, go fuck yourself. And then you find out years later that you, um, <laughs> you were ill that day, not forever. And the pill that they gave you actually accelerates the illness. That's how they're identifying it in some of us. This is practicing medicine. <laughs> and they tell you right there, if I had had a known, I would have never bothered. But uh, I trusted people. Uh, Mr. Grimner has said something to my comment about the side effects. He says, uh, Flash. Side effects are a misnomer, should be called direct effects. Uh, there you go. Now, most people don't agree with me, Grim. You are a rarity. And as we both know, from dabbling in the uh, electronic world over the past few years, there's not a lot of people that have the nut to come out and be forthcoming with these, hey, wait a minute kind of stories and hey you're telling me it's it's this but it's really the delivery of the sentence is how the listener gets the point so they minimize everything so that they've got legal room to wiggle out of responsibility because if they told you on and this is what's going to happen when you take this drug most people are going to probably i'm going to go with the illness this looks pretty fucked up or maybe I'm wrong, and maybe everybody else is weak, except me and Grim. And everybody else has got no spine, and then, eh, they're going to just do what they're told. I, I can appreciate that. I did that. That's why I'm where I'm at now. I don't trust these people. 
if you trust these people, well, good luck to you. I would recommend you find another way, but if there ain't any other way and you feel that's it, then do it. But it's not good for you. And there's plenty of folk beside me that share that opinion, and we're not telling anybody what to do. Make sure you got that part. This is about what I did, how I did it, and sometimes even why I did it. Then there's a lot of mystery behind the why. But things like the blood pressure, that was, in my case, maybe I'm the rarity because I'm so small that having the high blood pressure thing didn't make sense mentally in the first place. And then I've always been... Uh, through this whole last about 15 years, I've always preferred to walk over driving in a car. So I've probably averaged, I don't know, 10, 15 miles a week for 15 years, give or take. And I don't see how, if I'm healthy enough to do that, how the hell did I ever end up with high blood pressure? So I think the the scam is in the questions, whatever questions the doctors do ask. In in the state of mind I was in, in, in some kind of pain, waiting in their room, and then they make you wait. And it's a treat. They treat you very um, incidental, you know, like a Hannibal Lecter. Nobody, you know, nobody matters. It's all a matter of interpretation in the end. And this is how I go through my interpretation, how I saw this this beast we call freedom. <laughs> freedom. Can I please cross your border, Mr. Bad Guy, with a gun? You know, what do you do if they say no? <laughs> you going to fight with your little forty five and protect yourself? I don't think so. See, I, I think most of this, we've just been conned and lied to so badly that they got us doing just saying the lamest shit like uh well i'm not a particularly uh i'm not particularly fond of weapons i think that you can do just as much damage with a toothpick as you can a 22 under the right circumstances so weapons are weapons i look at a gun as kind of a pussy weapon because you need distance between you and your victim <laughs> partner <laughs> what would you call that you know if somebody and then they go well in cases of defense so now what you've turned uh, a fist fight into is a shooting because somebody attacked me so i shot him because i had a gun and i got a carry thing that says right here i can do this so if somebody punches me in the face, I'll just shoot them. <clears throat> well, like I said a hundred times, I've had a very boring life. And I've yet to ever see anybody pull out a gun and shoot anyone. Ever. Not even the cops. I've had the cops draw on me, but never shoot. <laughs> or it wouldn't be here. But uh, outside of that... Uh, and hell, I wasn't even armed when they did it. They just being scaredy cat cops. Put your hands where you can see them. Oh, you're making me piss my pants. Look, look. And, <laughs> and here we are. But I I know I got this really horrible opinion about guns. I've never seen anything good come come from using one. I've never met anybody that bragged about, hey, you know what I did this morning? I went out and shot five people at a bank robbery protecting everybody from bullets and such when do you ever hear good stuff no you don't maybe if you watch enough movies so it can amp you up so you'd be afraid or live in the states where if you don't have a gun you might need one things changed i suppose wow what a world you know because uh, i just briefly remembered grim uh doing a freaker's ball one night and he said he had a little friend in the neighborhood trying to explain why he was playing with his window <laughs> he was looking for somebody or something well grim let him live 
didn't call to the cops or anything, but move the guy down the road, get on your way. But this is what I mean. Even at that level of danger in society, is a gun's really not necessary, right? Of course, people are going to argue back and forth all day and all night. I'm not saying take them away. I'm just saying, to me, they're just useless. I mean, if I'm close enough to you, a gun ain't going to stop me. You might think it will, but not everybody's John Wayne. <laughs> that firing a gun and aiming it and doing it right and pulling the trigger and ah, that, hey, you know, um, you're not making a cup of coffee there. You're you're changing a life forever. So I went with the odds and just figured I'm not important enough that anybody's going to want to kill me. Maybe might want to beat me up or something, but kill me, nah. What for? And I've been right so far, and it's justified my uh, my pussiness about having a gun around. And then there's that drinking thing too, cause you never know. Some some nights I've sat here and drank me a little bit of whiskey or whatnot. And the thing that happens to me when I drink is I want to do shit that I would never do when I'm not drinking, like fire a gun and see hey wonder what happened if i shot the tv set with it stupid just bonehead idiotic things so not everybody's like me i understand that so you gun lovers out there don't get all your knickers in a twist i just wanted to have something controversial to talk about on in a perfect world you know because like muhammad ali said well i beat him up but I won't kill him. <laughs> well, it was Carlin that said that about Ali, but, you know, he wasn't going to go to Vietnam and kill people he didn't even know him. Now, where did that thinking go? And I'll bet you once upon a time, that boy had somebody put a gun into him. Say, hey, do this or else, but he, he was a fighter. <laughs> so, chances are good he faced off with a pistol or two. But me... No. What for? I'm just a small, happy hippie smoking my way through the world. <laughs> one country at a time. And I'm parking my ass right here in this one for the moment. It's been, <laughs> it keeps on going. I am so amazed at life right now. It's not believable. But I've got this other side of me that reads the internet and the opinions and the ideas and the input and the output. And the difference in words from verbal to print is unbelievable. I think words are even stronger when you read them than when you hear them for some reason. And I can't explain that one. I just think it. I could be wrong because you might think the exact opposite. You know, because we're not all dorks working for a common goal. <laughs> some people are... Uh, they're working for their self, you know. They're, everything is me, 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 me. Me, I am so wonderful. Ah, look at me. I own this. Ah, look at me. I have that. Now, <laughs> there's a whole, whole bunch of others of us that go, wow. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Hey, Don of Van Meter just popped up on the hour here i wonder if she knows we're we're doing it uh in perfect world without vanny because I, I i lose beetle and rob when i when i do radio with with vincent and uh i don't know there's people that don't like me so when vincent does the radio with me they don't listen to him <laughs> it's just and in print that's still hold on let me get rid of this here in print, it seems to be a, a different level of reality to me. And not so much only on my side. I mean, I read other people thinking that if you read it, if it's in print, if you saw the link and the type and the this and then the other, that gives it an edge of reality that talking about it mm, doesn't really hold, I don't think. I think the talking about it is where the making fun and having a good time because we're living like this and crying about it all the fucking time is just, God, 
You'd get on my nerves. I'd have to shoot you with my, uh, you know, my death ray. <laughs> I remember telling telling Goober he wanted advice. He wants to not be impoverished, and I gave him a brilliant idea, and he laughed at me. And I'll give it all. I'll give it to you here on in a perfect world. And if you're seeking funds and you're in need of money. I would suggest that you go to the billionaires and you ask them for a grant to build a death ray that will destroy everybody on planet Earth. <laughs> Scribble something down, draw something, and that's your prototype. Here, fund me. Give me $5 million. I'll have it built for you in 10 years. <laughs> you know, live on 50 grand a month or something for a while and just chisel at it don't spend it all at once <laughs> you might be able to pull it off before they catch you and what that that'd be a nice 10 year stretch wouldn't it <laughs> oh what are they going to do when you don't pay them back send you to prison <laughs> wow you guys are a tough crowd tough crowd i'm telling you i have to get my friend stallone over here to talk to you and uh, knock some sense into your skull because you're obviously not listening. Anyway, no, nah, I'm just kidding around. It's hard to do the radio programs without a partner for me still. And it's more because of content. I smoke a pipe load and I just jump from one crazy idea to the other. Oh, and I'll give you an update. Any cat lovers out there, the doctor is fine. He has never been better since we moved here, this cat is like a brand new cat. So, I don't know. And I was I gave an update last time, too. And I'm just amazed that we've come so far that they can save an animal so easily. And the animal healed faster than a human. <laughs> it's just like, boom. Chop, chop, chop. They took his nuts and they gave him some kind of medicine he had a a horrible infection, probably from, live, you know, he lives outside sometimes. And uh, that seems to have cured all that stuff. And now he's coming in and out the house more regularly. He's not staying away so much anymore. So I guess me and uh, me and the doctor have something in common. We've, we've both matured. <laughs> but I got to keep my nuts. Right, honey? Ah, I got a yes steer out of her because, hey, you know what she could have said, right? You sciencey papas. <laughs> That's not my fault. But, you know, there, hmm. the other night I did a show on a modern, not the other night, Saturday, the dork table. And I was trying to be amusing and uh, helpful at the same time. Not trying to teach anybody anything here this is not about teaching this is about we got an idea we know what's going on and we're surviving it each of us in our own special fucking way and we don't tell everybody the details of the operation they they all know you know it's a just a, it's a mindset a way to live and it doesn't hurt anybody that's why this happens <laughs> Anyway, so I was trying to put together like a guideline if you were new and what's this about the money not being real? Holy shit, that can't be true. And then you show somebody the fractional reserve banking link. It takes about eight minutes. Now it explains it in a simple, uh, not childish, but a, a simple everyday way so you can follow oh wait a minute this is how they do this and that's how they do that well where did the money come from and then once it clicks in your head <laughs> oh crying out loud that there is no money then the first thing you'll read you'll start hearing people make excuses but they trade commodities and this backed by blah 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 yeah, it's a freaking hustle. We get told things by people we don't know in print and in video. And then we just to go along with it because otherwise, where are you going to get your fucking milk if you don't go to the grocery store? This is 2019. 
Farms ain't legal anymore. They even control the way that the milk is drank that you get from the cow. <laughs> they manage to illegalize anything that's good for a human being. They're going to find a way to regulate and tax and illegalize it for your own good so that I don't know why. <laughs> doesn't. I cannot make any real sense out of it. It's why I call it an illusion. Oh, but the Queen of England and da 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 da. I remember when I was in London, going by that palace down by uh, Trafalgar Square somewhere, some fucking palace. I forget what Buckingham Palace or something, something like that. Anyway, this is how impressed I am with all their fucking money and their. It's the history that was that I appreciated, and but I didn't need to remember the name of every building I looked at and who built it and what date they put it up. Nah, that detail stuff <laughs> right over me like it never happened. But the building that was still there that I was looking at, wow, that was cool. But the people that supposedly occupied the building, what a fucking joke, man. And I'm telling you, I got my, uh, my feelings hurt her out there when I would say anything bad about the Queen and yeah the poor people in the East End of London actually felt admiration for this parasite from Germany I mean, do you people know anything about your own history at all even even a little of it and as it turned out no they knew the same shit that I was taught to believe when I was school and then when I got unschooled and learned the truth about how shit was, wow, then everybody I encountered as I aged, the more people I'd meet, the more people thought there was something odd about me. <laughs> so as a result of being wrong all these years, I end up at Real Liberty Media, agreeing pe with people like Grimner and Rob Works and Kate and Well Then, Frumped Van Meter. <laughs> I mean, uh, Cowboy Tech was out here. There he is, Cowboy Tech on the chat. But this group of people, and we don't uh, have physical daily contact, but we all think in a similar way. <laughs> it's really weird. The living ex experiences are all different. One's single, one's married, one's off in California with his wife, blah, 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 blah. But the core of the whole thing is we know the truth about some of this stuff. Not everything. I'm sure there's tons of stuff I don't even haven't even scratched it yet. So I'm still consumed with the electric and the water, uh, the food, the air. Things I can physically go, you know, hey, yeah, I handle that, but I don't know. I'd like to get on here and tell cat stories so it's not a complete bust and it's all bad you know Wah. and it's hard as hell to be funny when uh, <laughs> I'm telling the joke it makes me laugh like I just did thinking about I laugh at my own jokes because that's the point I think this is freaking funny I'm going to tell you <laughs> anyway are we in a toxic world yet have we been in a toxic world or are we gonna be in a toxic world i wonder because no matter what life throws at us we adapt to it like rats and roaches some of us and others the medical system gets a hold of us and does you know they're experimenting on us and there's so much proof to that and it's so disappointing to to harp on it i suppose it must sound like if you're listening but it's true in my in, in my reality, whatever my reality is worth to anybody else is beyond me. But I got to where I am, actually, taking the advice or counsel of other, other people older than me at the time. They go, hey, stupid, why don't you try doing this? And I go, hey, you know what I found out doing it your way? It doesn't hurt when I do it that way. <laughs> ah, that was the point, grasshopper. You have learned. And, you know, sometimes as you get older, you're not, like, impervious to fucking up. That's not, the, no, that's not even part of it. But 
I think what you do learn is to be aware of when you do fuck up so that you can not do it as often as you could do it because it's part of the circle thing, huh? Part of the cycle. I, yeah, my wife, she's like Vinny when she hears her name. She answers to it. <laughs> I call her circles. Not everybody else does, though. So. Anyway. So, we're on this merry-go-round fucking thing of life. Well, I think we're all trying to survive, you know, not, uh, what's the other word? That doggy dog I heard, see, I get a lot out of Grimm doing that leftover. He's way different when he's doing his links. And he was um, talking about the middle class and how, in his opinion, there is no such thing as a middle class. And there hasn't been for quite a while. And that's true because even though uh, what, what level of finance we're living on is comfortable, it's by no stretch of the imagination are we millionaires and, uh, you know, living the life. No, 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 no. But we're considered by who to be. No, we're just poor with uh, the house to pay for. <laughs> it's dead slaves. It's a very unpopular word in my home. Boy, if I say that to Sir, I get the blue ices. Um, death stare. <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> but see, that's what I mean. We know the truth, but oh man, the truth is so painful. You know, it, I don't know. It's not to me, it, but <laughs> I guess I don't care anymore. I've just gotten old enough to where I accept that this is the best that we can expect from the people that we have in positions of decision. <laughs> and there's no way. The game is rigged. It's not the people. It's not the players. It's not the voters. It's the game. <laughs> we're, all, we're all suckers and we're all pitted against each other so we can call each other names and never get to the meat of this thing and get rid of the game they're playing and put something else in it. But no, and then people go, well, I, Goober is always hounding me. Hey, you don't have any answers. You just, blah, 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 blah. and I tell him, I told him once. I ain't going to ever fucking tell him again. But I do it on the radio because this is where it belongs to be spoken. And I think Miss Mary and Vincent decided for the sake of um, pleasantry that we would call it my three-step plan to unfunk the world. And it's a very simple plan. It's uh, three steps. In my theory, if you take the first step, the other two take their self. So it's really, really simple. Even now You don't even need to take notes or write anything down here. Don't lie. Nobody. If nobody lied... There'd be no business secrets. There'd be no wars. There would none of this drama that we have keeping us back would be there. These are all products of deception, and a deception is a lie. And that's what I'm talking about. If we weren't raised to behave the way we behave, we wouldn't. But we have been. And if you try to break the mold like I've tried to do, it works for me just freaking fine. Other people don't seem like they're concerned about breaking out of anything. They're happy in their life the way it is. But not... <laughs> I don't look at the Real Liberty Media chat people as... Un you know, they're not uncomfortable in life. It's just they know the reality of it. And that's the painful part. Knowing and being surrounded by, physically surrounded by, millions and millions of adults that think this is the best for everybody. They don't have a clue. They don't even have the uh, ability to understand what the fucking truth is if you told it to them. And it took a lot of work to get us to where we are now. This this is a long-range, well, brilliantly thought-out, well-executed plan. And it's just simple. All you have to do 
is never tell the fucking truth and you get results like polluted water, polluted air, people at fucking war with each other for hundreds of years. My people hate your people because your people did this, that, blah, 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 blah. And it works. How? How does that work? And just being honest and telling the truth doesn't. What? Maybe there's no profit in honest? <laughs> Because the truth of it is, you know, if if there's enough of anything to make a billionaire out of anybody, then there's plenty to go around. It's the method of distribution that's tainted. And they tainted it, but they made it look pretty and they tell you about it in nice ways. But the reality of it... We're debt slaves on tax farms, <laughs> and they mule, you know, we're mules. They use us to produce or manufacture or lie or cheat or steal. Whatever game you play in society, it's all expected. They're creating it. You're doing your role. <laughs> it's nothing chaotic about none of it. And look in the, uh, I, I've been real curious about this the last year or two because i've been a, a fan of the 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 killer dealers in life that life always just fascinated me because i some part of my mind just cannot handle that in a reality there's people out there that murder each other and you know barbecue them up and feed them to their friends at parties and stuff like that and the older i get the less belief I have that it's as popular to commit murder as they make it look through the TV. And I'm just going to hold that opinion because no matter where I move to, I never move to where people get murdered. Now, how, how can I be that lucky moving around as much as I have over the years? And being exposed to life, you know, without, like I was, <laughs> I was, hold on. I was telling the story about my trip to Derby, England once on the radio program, and I got Grimner's attention because this guy could have been a psycho killer from, you know, Derby, England, for all I knew. But I don't live that kind of life, so those kind of people don't seem to... I don't draw that. I draw the, the guy with the... Um, crossword puzzle in his pocket you know in case there's nobody to talk to not <laughs> not the other way around the guy with a crossword puzzle that's trying to be left alone there's a difference and that's the guy that ended up yakking because he i asked the uh train conductor hey when's the stop for darby and then anyway i couldn't shut this guy up and i think at that age in life i would have felt uncomfortable if I'd have been threatened by anything he said but it was one of those this is your lucky night you couldn't have ran into anybody that could help you any better than I can and and I gotta admit for a moment or two I was wow this is okay well I'm gonna go see what happens but just for a brief moment I had a sensible hey ah, be careful okay I'm I'm gonna go and it was everything he said and more and on a uh, on a cheap low level uh, life, because I met the guy in the freaking train. I wasn't going looking for a Hilton. You know, I a uh, jeans and you know overcoat, heavy coat kind of guy, not a suit. Uh, that that stuff. That was my twenties for a while. <laughs> that was fun though. But uh, well, trusting people. I trust everybody to do exactly what they're going to do. And I don't think ever I know what you're going to do. I've tried that. And, uh, very, It's kind of a guessing game. But yeah, I'm not very good at that. Knowing what somebody's going to do next. Nah. I can take your word for it. Or I cannot take your word for it. But knowing. Nah, I have to see it. To, to experience it. To make the decision. So... No, there's no psychic in in me. I don't I don't see the future coming. And I've got a kind of a skewed version of the past, according to uh, 
society because the way that I, I end up looking at society, how it works, and the inner workings of this destructive shitstorm that we're collectively watching. I don't think anybody is directly involved in it that's on the RLM. You know, if you're on the RLM, you're more than likely not like marching on uh, with those yellow vests. or Did that hit the States yet? I read somewhere, I was so disappointed, that uh, the yellow vests are getting funded by Soros. And if that's true, it doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means that they're funded by Soros. So it's a, it's another, it's a false flag. This, it, it, it will end or it won't end, but it will not change anything. It's just distraction to keep your mind off. You can't get out of this. You're a slave. Shut up. Go, go sit down. We'll let the grown-ups deal with it. <laughs> That's the way this looks to me. Now, I'm going to indulge myself one more time here. hope I don't take a little too much and cough, cough like I did last time. I had to mute for half a minute to regain my composure so I didn't drive Rob Works away. <laughs> my buddy Rob. He's cool. And me and Rob disagree about a few things, but not the overall. In this shit, we disagree with bacon and guns. And so what? Rob's never going to shoot me, and I'm never going to eat his bacon, so we're good. <laughs> if Rob was sitting at the table here, he wouldn't shoot me. He's, he's not that kind of gun lover. He's the Grimner kind, I think. This is my opinion. What I've made of you guys. And and how I mean a gun is a pussy weapon is if you're the aggressor with a gun, you are at the weakest point in your fucking life, period. And if you're defending yourself, that's from a pussy. <laughs> that's... I, I hope I explained that right because I'm sure I'm going to make enemies holding this one. <laughs> I'm not a gun lover. I'm not a death lover either. I got such a kick out of them saving the doctor. Because I've scraped up a few dead animals for friends. And uh, I've had a, to be the one to drive to the place to put the dog down once or twice. And uh, it's not... It's not a big deal. It wouldn't a big a big deal if that had been the way it went. I'd have just been missing the cat instead of playing with him. And wow, that must sound cold. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, I said it out loud, so I must mean it to some level. But you know, I'm happier the cat's with us than I am that he's not. But I'm not gonna lose sleep over a passing cat. Now, Hannah, <laughs> my, we've had Hannah since the beginning, so Hannah might be a little different, but she's only four, so we got a ways to go for all that. But when you're, you know, when you're faced with a, a an animal passing in the house, ew, these grown-up things make me all squishy and weird, and, uh, mm. I don't know. I guess this kind of has something to do with how I look at this gun thing. And I would just blame it all on if we weren't taught to be aggressive fucks and kill each other, chances are we wouldn't. But what would we have to be taught so that we wouldn't ever end up as aggressive fucks that want to kill each other? And when you consider what are the reasons that People get so angry at each other that they want to end it. Now, nah, there's more to this than TV has let us know. Hmm, I wonder what it is. And, oh, I'm not like, going to be an advocate of violent acts. I'm just saying that they've spent a lot of years trying to convince us, convince us that we are a part of the animal kingdom. And I don't know about all that. I ponder that one sometimes. And because me and the dog and the cat are so physically, for one, different. And then on the other hand, when you start, they, 
they can they're so limited with their movements they can do a few things that are tricky like lick their balls or something that you probably wouldn't want to do anyway if you could well most of us <laughs> i'm not gonna say any names you know who i was thinking of <laughs> but uh <laughs> um so anyway, so I look at this animal and I and I see their weakness and then I look in their eyes. I'm a, a, I like eye contact with living beings. It's very weird. Some people are uh, intimidated by it. And some animals, depending on how the animal was raised, you can look at them and they get uncomfortable. It's a, a some kind of an aggressive act. They're you're threatening their territory somehow. But it's not a common thing. It's a rare dog that does that. Usually the domestic dogs, just they're people lovers. They just love everybody. And then when you get them around the other dogs, they're all yapping in dog language at each other about shit that, you know, unless you're really clever and you know a lot about dogs, you're in the dark, like me. I, I make up my own excuses. And like I said, proof is the first answer that comes to me that I like. It's proven. There you go. <laughs> oh, I, if I couldn't laugh at myself, I'd feel really bad when I laughed at other people. Because I do. Oh, do I. Oh, and here's something I wanted to start doing on my uh, radio podcast as a rule. Now, I'm going to start it out with a short uh, trip down memory lane. I couldn't find a way to put it that quickly. And it goes back to the World Truth days where I met Mary and eventually met my wife and all that. But the site didn't work out. Things changed. Right now we got Ant and Bo and a little help from Grim. I didn't know Grim isn't involved. He's just helping them out over there. I thought he had something more to do with it. But they used the name realliberty.org. And it's a similar site. It's got that Facebooky uh, kind of appeal to it, that format to it, where it's easy to read, easy to navigate, lots of stuff to do on it. And, but see, we still got Facebook to deal with, and whatever. What's that other one? That Twitter one. So people are going to generally be satisfied with the bigger voice. Ooh, look, they said it on Twitter. Ooh, look, they said it on RLO. That's nice. <laughs> but uh, I like saying it over at RLO. So if you guys um, like the stuff that I write, I do a blog over there. <laughs> I had a few people checking it out for a bit, and then you know, it got quiet over at the site, so I'm going to try to stir up a little shit over at the reallibertymedia.com and get some of these reallibertymedia.com folks to participate in the reallibertyorg and <laughs> see what happens. Because I've seen Rob, Rob Works, Java Doctor, Grimner, Miss Mary, Hal Anthony. I've seen a few of the local RLMers over on RLO. But not enough. I think I'm going to shame them into going to the RLO and making it a sight to behold. <laughs> and that fucking funny grim. But I still, I wanted to mention it to you guys because I don't see too many of you over there liking my great stuff. <laughs> the more likes you get, the more she loves you. And, uh, Pancakes didn't show up today. I wonder what's going on. He was complaining about the snow, though. He said, oh, it's snowing. Some feral cats and whatnot living under a trailer. You know, the local hippy-dippy news from the local hippy-dippy to the other hippy-dippy. <laughs> so I can keep track with my fellows all over the world with his freaking computer. And it's really easy to do, too. I... I just somehow find ways to do things wrong and eh. But between Cirque and Grimm, I've managed to do my own program by myself, except for the the technical stuff beyond the 
production of this. That goes to Grimm. But I write the notes for it. I'm a responsible radio uh, personality on the reallibertymedia.com. And I encourage others, other people out there in the world of radio enthusiasts like Anti. Ooh, he's going to come back. He said he's got some production problems. But he does real, more professional kind of, like Grimm with his videos and all that high tech stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. I do a little talky show, uh, talk some stuff, make some jokes, tell some bad stories. But don't ever expect that you're going to be hearing the good music and uh, uh, watching great links here. Now, you got to go see the Grimner and Moose Girl on Friday night for the movie links. Or not movie links, the video links. And <laughs> sometimes, if I can get up that early, it's good because they're live. But if I miss them... Uh, well, there's always the summertime will be coming around, and the sun's up real early, so mm. I might be I might be listening five o'clock in the morning out here in Denmark. I'll be listening to Freakers Ball for a month or so, with, with any luck. We'll see how the summer goes. It's early, and uh, we ain't even got to uh, got through March yet. I'm already in the summertime because I've done this. You know, now I've got experience. So I, I'm not in a routine, but I've I've got the thing figured. It's going to happen, and if I'm here when it happens, I know what's going to happen. Not a surprise anymore. Like Moose's weather. She was still hot under the collar today. Boy, I'll tell you, poor woman. And then she was saying that, you know, it usually ends, and they got an extra month plus the extreme. I think, uh, who else is out in that way? Beetle, um, now let's see, Kate's in Florida, there's not, well, maybe there's a few more people than I recognize, but they're out there, not me, so it's, it's a sympathy kind of thing, oh, I can understand it, but luckily I've never had to deal with it, and, well, I keep reading, uh, Moose say she's gonna move, <laughs> get out of there, this could just be one of those things, you don't, see, that's what I mean, it, the system is so big and so unexplainable that the things that happen that seem by chance are somehow directly interfered with to get the results that they get. Now, the system does everything they do under the guise of assistance and secrecy because other governments might find out what they're doing and you don't want the Chinese to know what we're doing to you because then the Chinese will do it to you cheaper. <laughs> well, maybe not. That might have been a really shitty way to explain it. but <clears throat> uh, I, I don't know. Can it really all be uh, just a big chaotic ball of happenstance? Because when you look in nature, you see patterns. There's things happen a certain way as a result of a certain process. And then you get all this chaos from the people. And hmm, explaining it on the radio program is never going to, I'm never going to probably do it correctly. And I know I jump from one thing to the other too, so that doesn't help. My lack of focus doesn't bring me to conclusions. But I don't not even sure I'm trying to find conclusions. Just trying to do the show and give you guys something to think about. Maybe even piss you off a little bit. Like with the gun thing. I'm sure somebody's got something nasty to say to me about that. But then I wouldn't say that to you in person. This is uh this is a in a perfect world kind of you know, how would I feel about it in a perfect world? As opposed to a dork table. And I think in a in a perfect world, our our behavior would have been uh, brought out of us differently, and and the way we look at at the world is really negative. It's really skewed. We're so far off. What we should be doing is not what we're doing, and I say that because of the results. And let me see. Whoa, they're talking weights and measures in the chat room. 
on the reallibertymedia.com right now. National Pancake Day, March 12, 2019, and he didn't show up for his pancakes at the door. Uh, in a perfect world. Well, yeah, but that's because this is a Tuesday night. He's probably do or Tuesday afternoon. He's probably working. He has his responsibilities to manage, and uh, some people can't get away to, to listen to the program when it's live because of it. But I'm a lazy old man, and man, this time frame suits me. This is just late enough. I'm thinking of backing up the. Uh, the Thursday night show a couple hours because it's it's really interfering with my program. And I thought I could do that, but uh, with all this time change, the one week the cat was uh, kept keeping me up and I could, couldn't do it. So I'm going to uh, submit a new time zone uh, before uh, the day that I do the show or after this show. I'll think about it and talk, tell uh, Grimner what I've decided but I don't want to give it up unless you want the time slot back. I'll still do 20% off. <laughs> off. 20% off. We're all 20% off. Just ask the government. They'll tell you. There's some kind of a mental disorder to explain why you're not going to kiss their butt. It's what it boils down to now. What do they call that? APAC? Uh, where you, you've got to swear an oath to Israel and Israel's the greatest, and everybody else sucks ass. And, well, you can't say anything bad, because if you say bad things about them, then you're bad. And, but you can say bad things about everybody else, but not them. Right. You know what? They, huh. Ah, thank you. I just got elixir My goodness. Huh? It's good to be the king. It is good to be the king. Anyway. Thanks, honey. Uh, <laughs> she throws me. See, that's why I married her. She can bring me a cup of coffee, and I just forget what the hell I was just even talking about. Just completely lost my mind. I will go back to weights and measures on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Uh, what's going on? Because I lost an hour because you guys lost an hour, but my clock stayed the same. So I had to do it. An hour earlier, an hour remember what I was rambling about, but now I got to do it an hour earlier to fit the time that you're in. Oh, I think we're being hustled on this time thing, man. I don't think, I don't think there's no such thing as daylight savings. I think somebody's screwing somebody. Uh, why they? They did it after World War II when it was easier to control us with lies, too. Now, you have to explain yourself to a bunch of tectards that know how to figure out the circumference of a blah, blah, blah with a hoochie majigger. And these people are smart. Not all of them. Uh, we know who I'm talking about. But, hey, I would say 99% of everybody else. <laughs> Never mind. That that gives my buddy a half a brain, just in case he can't do the math alone, or give or take. Anyway, so we're entertaining tonight with all kinds of crazy, nasty shit. But when when I read the details of weights and measures, like the thing with the cannabis, is it really got me at the beginning of the show? I heard it last night, or this today from last night. And this legalization, you know, when you read the details and the weights and measures, where does, where does the, uh, I don't, I don't, can't find the right word for it. Compliance to go along with this crap come from people's greed. You can't tell me that if you're buying something <clears throat> on the black market <clears throat> for, say, $25. We won't even use a weight. We'll just say $25 to give it a number. But you're going to turn around and you're going to pay $40 to the government to buy the same damn thing because it's legal. Then I think somebody's not quite understanding what the word legal entails. 
if it, if it wasn't illegal or legal, what would it be? A carrot or a rhubarb or a some well see it's a matter of ownership at that point because we've been fucked and people think they own stuff that it's not theirs to own in the first place but i don't know they say possession is nine-tenths of the law well hmm i don't know see it depends on the circumstances of the situation what the thing is everything gets broken down and because of all the lies. See, this is what I mean. If we were just telling the truth and a carrot was a carrot and a pot plant was a pot plant and nobody was trying to get the best fucking uh, profit out of the damn exchange and willing to go to any lengths to accomplish that, let's make it legal and tax and regulate it. Well, we'll be able to control it beyond our wildest imagination. Look at this. But the public, what does the public see? My interpretation of what the public sees is not pretty. I'm telling you folks, uh, they do this in Freetown. They do it again illegally, but of course, jurisdiction, being whatever that shit truly is, these people invade their squatting place that they squatted in and have been on for 40 odd years and they come in there and they do whatever the fuck they want to do and the only reason that they can do that is because they have guns because if they just came over to talk about it they'd be packed off their way no go away oh we're not giving you anything oh to <laughs> go bye bye but we have these uh, word games that we play. They call them laws, and they're not. There's no reason that this plant should ever have been a, uh, a substance, a controlled substance. What do they call that? Schedule one. Worse than heroin. Worse than cocaine. Worse than opioids. And here we are. In, and we find out the truth. People know the truth. And now they're dicking around because, well, you can make money off it. Now, if that isn't the cornerstone of a fault, what is it? Well, I can make money off it, so that makes it okay. Instead of just leaving people alone, if you want to smoke it, get a fucking pot. Dig up a couple of feet in your backyard and throw some weed <laughs> some seeds in it they'll grow that's what it is it's a weed you don't need to pamper them you just leave them alone that's what nature does and they got all these things changed and conglomerated and calculated <laughs> they're going to regulate us right into whatever I, what I, what would you call that? They're going to put us in perspective. <laughs> They're going to keep us in tack. You know, tact? What are they going to call that one? They're going to keep us in line. <laughs> is what they're going to do. They're going to control us with their motherfucking country. Their state. And their fucking thugs. <laughs> and the links that these monkeys will go to to use the tools that they have to punish us with is it's unbearable at this point in in free society and uh, fortunately i am far from a big free society so i don't have this problem but i was getting a little a little shaky on the voice got a little bit bull winkle going on like mary had I don't know. Is it the rain? It could be anything, but uh, I don't let the weather stop me from walking more more than a day. <laughs> I chicken out about once a week, and then I okay, I'm I'm over it. But I I'm not too big of a sissy. I get out there in the weather, but it gives me a bullwinkle voice, and then I sound terrible on the radio. And that's my uh, that's my probably my biggest problem in life right now is. Uh, I have a Bullwinkle voice, you know, and I would hope in a perfect world that people would be able, you know, to uh, 
look in the mirror and see what the problems are. You know, if you got problems, it's not us. You know, if I have problems, it's it's not you that's the problem. It's me, because <laughs> that's what a problem is. And some things can't be solved in a way that's comfortable to live with. So you find ways to either define them or change them. And sometimes, like with the Federal Reserve Bank, there ain't no way in life I'm never going to make a dent in changing any of that. But I at least know it's there. I know what it truly is. And I'm not in love with that illusion. You know, so I think in the world, in the the physical world, it brought me more reality. You know, a better quality of reality. Instead of chasing things, uh, things come to me because I stay put. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm not missing stuff anymore. And as much stuff as I saw, I missed a lot of stuff because I was traveling at 500 miles an hour here to there. Ah, Mr. Java Denis is 62 years worth. Oh, yeah, Grimner even agrees with that. Society is an enemy of freedom. And, yeah, I, I harp on that all the time. We're, we're in two bigger groups. And the smaller the group you've got, what the, the benefit of a small group is uh, you keep the honesty about it. it. It's harder to lie in a smaller group. People that don't tell the truth in a group this size expose their self. It doesn't, you don't even have to say anything about it. And at some point, if you did, like I did, at some point, you don't have to anymore. And I've hit the point, but eh, I'm running out of time on the show. Oh, the, the old, not Java, the other guy, he gets my goat sometimes. And, mm. But see, that's me. Because I don't want people to treat each other like that. But I do it. But I try not to do is instigate it. <laughs> and that, and then I'm a little boring when I ain't got anything funny to say. But, you know, it's it's a chat room. And uh, I can go on a rant whenever I like and talk to myself until my eyes bleed if it makes me happy. As my fellows, oh, I got some elixir. <laughs> and as my fellows, like, uh, oh man, Woody, Woody does some great rants. I see a Java dot, Java Denis. He's got a little chatter going on on the RLM right now. And anyway, that's a show for In a Perfect World. And uh, in a perfect world, I think we would just live in a true honest way whatever the fuck that means it just doesn't mean you're lying don't lie tell the truth it's very simple to do but we're caught in this big ball of lies <laughs> anyway see you next uh next time guys and i'm gonna give you the lineup out of memory i hope i do this one right and we've got a time change this week. Ah, I'll just do the shows. Well, time or not. And we're on Tuesday. So tomorrow night is Miss Mary uh, Gramsci in the Rocket Chair podcast. Now, I heard Grim say at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And she does that on Wednesday and Friday. Thursday night, I do a thing called 20% off. I'm going to back it up a few hours. I, I'm I'm not doing good doing it that late. And I'll tell you what time uh, tonight when we're done with this program. Uh, then uh, Friday, Miss Mary, 7 o'clock, East Coast time, does a rocket chair. And then after that, I think it's at 11, right? Grimner, 11 o'clock, Freaker's Ball. But this week, Moose has got a get me the fuck out of here plan to go to a music thing. And she's going to leave... Grimner sitting alone with his balls to the wall. And then Saturday, I'm coming back to do a dork table. I don't know if I could get Mary. I hope I could get get Mary and take her hostage. That would be kind of fun. Uh, I was listening to a year-old show we did, and geez, the recording quality was horrible. And 
that some of the topics were just disgusting. But me and Mary, we're some funny people, man. I was laughing. I was laughing at her stuff as well as my own stuff on a dork table rerun. And then Sunday we got up. Grimner comes on in the morning with the blues into the trivia game. Come on, you trivia people. I was in there battling it out with the brainiacs. I didn't see a whole lot of new faces coming around. Or old faces participating. Don't be a, don't be scared to lose to Grim and Moose and Kate and Rob Works and all those, those lightning fingered nerds that play trivia. Anyway, then after that, I was having fun with that one. Anyway, we got Hal Anthony comes on with uh, Behind the Woodshed, uh, three o'clock on the west coast of the USA, and that's where he takes out his big old can of whoop ass, <laughs> and it's. Uh, it's an amazing thing to listen to, to hear that side of the explanation. So pick up Hal Anthony if you're interested in that. It's really good stuff. Monday night, here's another 7 o'clock. Grimner does Grim Leftovers. from, And this week he said, he, I don't know what came over me, but I'm doing a new, new thing. I'm not even getting to the leftovers, so... I don't know. He's insane. He's just doing whatever he damn well pleases. And if you're going to be like Vinny and try to live up to the name of the show, you're in trouble. <laughs> it ain't going to happen that way. This is RealLibertyMedia.com. Things change around here with no notice. <laughs> and nobody votes. You do what you want. Do what you can live with at the RLM. And then uh, I'll see you next week on uh, In a Perfect World if you come back. And I'd like to thank everybody for playing along with me tonight. I had a fun time reminiscing and giving you advice about absolutely nothing. See you next week.